another episode of Media Bites. I'm your host, Random Rob. Tonight. So you pick out somebody to blackmail him? I didn't pick him out, you did. And he isn't somebody. He's responsible. For the girl? For everything. Him and all the motherfuckers in the world just like him. They're all the same. So let's blow up AT&T, eh? You know why they're all the same, Rich? Because it's never their ass that's on the line, never. It's always somebody else's. Always yours, mine, ours. So leave off the morality, okay? And don't write me off as a money-grubbing bastard altogether. Okay. But you don't need me. Do it yourself. That way you'd only have to split the money two ways. It's like trying to seduce a eunuch. Cutter's Way was a 1981 film noir drama directed by Ivan Passer. Passer was a prominent figure in the Czech New Wave in the 1960s, who worked alongside director Milos Forman and defected to America during the Russian invasion of 1968. The film was based on and originally titled after the 1976 novel Cutter and Bone by Newton Thornburg. The story concerns one Alex Cutter, played in a raging career highlight performance by John Hurd, a quixotic and alcoholic Vietnam veteran who attempts to convince his best friend Richard Bone in another career highlight performance by Jeff Bridges that he was witness to a murder. Shot in Santa Barbara, director of photography Jordan Cronenweth, who shot films like Blade Runner and Altered States, paints the film with a hazy, dreamy look that complements the eerie and whimsical story about friendship, blackmail, and revenge. Whimsy, I say, because if this film were made today, it would fit perfectly in that Tarantino-owned genre of fringe-dweller crime stories but it would probably be squalid and played for laughs and wouldn't have the deft subtlety and soulfulness to its structure that makes this film feel dreamlike, mysterious, and epic in ways that frankly reminded me a lot of Polanski's Chinatown. Chinatown is a film to me that has been like a poem or a riddle. I watch it, I get some of it, I notice something else, and I get lost in it. There's an artistic self-awareness and layering of symbolism in every single frame of that film that keeps pushing me to look deeper, and Cutter's Way enveloped my senses almost just as closely. Jack Nietzsche's score, which featured a singing saw melody, reminded me immediately of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, and I suspect Passer used it as an homage, since McMurphy and Cutter have some similar rebellious Don Quixote-like qualities. He's drunk. <laughs> Makes you say that. mistake. <laughs> I, did, I did, didn't even see the goddamn thing. <laughs> and besides, it was in my driveway. Hey, 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 don't hit that with me. Huh? Come on. Why don't you, 
Why don't you go? Come on, come on in the house. Have, come on in the house and have a drink, and we'll talk it over, okay? Hey, you know my old lady. She's got a vibrator your ass in love. Hey, go, go. Watch it. Come on, let's go inside. Let's come be on. neighborly. He's crazy. <laughs> hey, hey, watch it, watch it. Shh. Let's just call the police. Now look what you did. You woke up the dog. What works on your nerves when you watch Cutter's Way is trying to understand where Cutter is coming from. His certainty seems to be built on paranoia or envy, but the narrative cuts both ways. Up until the final moment of the film, and it's a slap in the face of a climax, you really have to decide for yourself about Cutter. The film doesn't cut you any slack. Bridges' character Bone uh, is an odd match for Cutter, living closer to this inner circle of wealthy autocrats that Cutter despises content with dragging along the bottom, sleeping with wealthy women for pocket money, and not having to prove himself to anyone. Add to this pair Cutter's wife, Mo, played, again, brilliantly by Lisa Eichhorn. On one hand, she plays Cutter's conscience, and on the other, she seems to exist in a haze of drugs and savage self-pity. Ultimately, you have a three-way character study that's so on point in plumbing the depths of these characters' notions of class and morality, it almost makes you forget you're watching a crime story, and reminds me at these points of the backroom limbos that Tennessee Williams' characters seem to inhabit. You're a little charmer, aren't you? I mean, your sister's, what, two days in the ground, and you're already planning how you're going to cash in. We're not going to keep the money. Ah, oh, shit. Give me a break, will you? Richard, I'm going. Wait a minute, hold it. This was your idea, Bone, telling little Mama all about it. Speak up. He's got nothing to say, Alex. Oh, of course not. He's got nothing to say. When does he ever have anything to say? But what about you? You're not some saint avenging the sins of the earth, you know, Alex. And if you are, what am I doing here? Oh, I know. I'm like your leg. Your leg? Sending messages to your brain and there's nothing there anymore. Cutter's Way is dreamlike and intoxicating, jaded, shrewd, and at times downright funny. It's a shame that studio changes at the time of its release left a film seen by few, even though it was critically praised. Like its characters, it seems resigned to exist at the fringe of its category, but it is not just another cult film with half-realized aspirations. It's a full-bodied film that hits you hard if you have the patience to follow it. Give it a look. I guarantee, if you watch it once, you'll watch it more than once. Thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. Also look for Media Bytes on Facebook. Feel free to leave any comments in the field provided below. I'd really like to hear from you. Once again, uh, this is Media Bytes, and we'll see you next time. Bye.